George couldn't recall ever seeing the man with the yellow hat looking like this. He was usually calm, cool, and wearing a yellow hat. Oh, here he comes. Hello? Good morning. Come on in. Ready as promised. Ah, uh, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I wanna keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. <laughs> well, we made it safely. Okay, now George, when I get back, we're going right to the planetarium, so take a bath. There'll be photographers there. I want you to look clean and fluffy. George was going to take a bath, just like he was told. Sure was a perfect hat. Who could resist trying it on? George wanted Compass to see him in the yellow hat. It'd only take a second. George saw the hat fly this way, but it disappeared. <laughs> the hat was back home and still perfect. Almost. George removed the piece of branch as carefully as any surgeon working on any yellow hat could. Okay, there was just a tiny thread there. No problem. Maybe he needed to pull harder. Or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. <laughs> it was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. <laughs> this stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. There were only two things that could get George to take a bath. Bubbles and Sproingy. 
the most awe-inspiring toy frog that ever lived, and the best bubble maker George ever met. A bath just wouldn't be a bath without them. What this belongs to. Oh, George! I found your lost boat <laughs> in the freezer. You know, George, if you were a little more careful with your toys, you wouldn't lose so many of them. You almost ready to go to the park? <laughs> hey, aren't you glad we found your boat, George? G George? <laughs> Charky wanted to play in the mud, too. <laughs> Hey, George, what do you say we go home and grab some lunch? <laughs> Maybe you should try and clean up a little bit before we go. We could be here all day doing this. You can clean up at home, George. Okay, George, lunch is ready. George, you have to get cleaned up before you can eat. Just take a quick bath. I'll wait. There were only two things that could get George to take a bath. Bubbles and... and... Springy the Frog. George wondered where he could be. George? George, what is taking so long? You can clean your room later, after you clean yourself, and after we eat lunch. <laughs> Hop in. Oh, I get it. You want to be launched like a new ship, huh? All right, here we go. Into the sea. <laughs> You're tickling me. Look, I know you took a bath already this morning, but you're muddy, George. No. <laughs> hey, look at all the fun bubbles. See? There was no way George could take a bath without Springy, who had to be around here somewhere. George? There was no way George was going to admit he lost another toy. <laughs> who had to be here somewhere. <laughs> George! George! One great thing about living in the country is fresh dairy products. Morning, Mr. Akins. And to George, one great thing about fresh dairy products was the cows. Mmm, 
Leslie sure likes you. <laughs> well, happy cows give more milk, so please stay as long as you like. Does that sound like fun, George? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember, be a good little monkey. <laughs> George really liked cows. <laughs> no one else he knew was that big, that friendly, and gave milk. <laughs> it seemed like Jumpy Squirrel must have had food stored everywhere. George had never seen so many colors anywhere else but in his crayon box. And they smell better than crayons. George wanted to share his discovery. After all, who doesn't like to smell nice flowers? George tried telling her to be a good little cow. Leslie obviously didn't speak monkey. So George tried to speak cow. More cows were coming. Maybe this whole field had once been filled with beautiful flowers, and they'd already eaten the rest. George had to act fast before these flowers became a big bovine buffet. Unfortunately, cows don't understand arrows. He tried to distract them by juggling apples. But the cows ate his act. So George borrowed an old scarecrow and turned it into a frightening scare cow. Spring is in the air. There's nothing a monkey likes more than to spring in the air. Lobby orderly. Hunley always kept a close eye on George. Come on, George. I wish I had your energy, George. Just watching George made Hunley tired. Hello, Professor Wiseman. <laughs> Hi. What do you have, George? Your favorite kind of dinosaur? <laughs> Oh, that's your favorite. 
But they're the same. Those are the bones that would be inside that. Huh? You know, same as the bones in you. <laughs> <laughs> Feel your arm. The hard part? That's bone. It's your skeleton. Now that he knew he had one of those under his face, George had to see the T-Rex skull up close. Uh, George, don't. It isn't safe. Oh. Are you okay? George always wanted to ride in an ambulance, but he couldn't really enjoy it. At the hospital, Dr. Baker decided they needed to see George's leg bone by taking an x-ray. Well, that's a small break. We have to put your leg in a cast. <laughs> now this cast will keep your leg from moving while the bone heals. Oh. <laughs> Hey, that looks like George! Huh? <laughs> Hunley knew what to do when he heard that name. <laughs> he got ready to defend the dignity of his lobby. Poor little guy. Is he all right? <laughs> oh, yeah, but he's gonna be out of action for weeks. No jumping. No noise. Hunley wasn't so sure this was George. Well, hello. You have a visitor, George. It was George, all right. No one else in the building smelled like that. Hello? Hunley come up here? Yeah, we're in George's room. You know, in the lobby, Hunley pays more attention to George than anyone. That's friendship. A uh, Hunley could keep George company when you go to work. I'd excuse him from his lobby duties. George, would you like Hunley to be your monkey sitter? <laughs> George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. <laughs> this part of the couch made a different sound. <laughs> that wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. Huh? What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? <laughs> George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. <sighs> the man with the yellow hat lived with George. So why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? But what kind? <laughs> of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat had to hear this. George? 
you you dreamt about an elephant? Oh, um, no more nature books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. This is better bedtime reading. The happy, sleepy monkey. Uh, good night. <laughs> this new sound certainly wasn't an elephant walking around. It was an elephant that was doing what? sleep at all last night. George never realized there were so many sounds in the world. He'd never listened hard enough. to the apartment upstairs, where the new neighbor lived, with his elephant. 